Hello and welcome to my channel, uh, 3D printing for edu for EDU. I'm spending my my days now doing free CAD videos, trying to get through some of the um, basics of that. And uh, today I'm going to be doing a video on a uh, thread threaded rod, or actually a lead screw. So you can see that picture down in the bottom here. Um, now I'm only doing a lead screw not because I think I can add to that. There's some great lead screw tutorials out there and I encourage you to find them. Uh, but this is more for construction lines and you can see the sketch I have here demonstrates the construction lines for a lead screw. If you're doing if you needed threaded rods or or nuts and bolts, I strongly recommend you use the parts work or the um the fasteners uh workbench. And you can see that those those items pictured here, and I'll let me bring up the fasteners uh, workbench. The fa fasteners workbench allows you to let me get back to that. Sorry, allows you to quickly add up from a variety of fast fasteners, all of which are configured are, are configurable uh, by diameter, um, and they're selectable with pre-configured diameters. And it'd be silly to waste your time uh, re redoing these. These are IS industry standard. You can turn the threading on and off so that it um, renders faster. So don't spend your time doing doing nuts and bolts. Uh, use the great work that's already been done. I don't happen to have the name in front of me of who of who did this, uh, but kudos to uh, to the author. This this these this is a tremendous workbench, and I strongly recommend you installing it. So if you're not going to be using that, if you're not going to be doing uh, fasteners, and even, they even have, let's they actually, one more thing, they even have threaded rod here, so it's not just the screws, um, you can just do uh, just the screw thread. Um, so even that is silly. I don't know if it has um, a trapezoidal function for the threading, but it has a thread but it, you know it would be, even though it's not trapezoidal, it'd be fine for to represent a th uh, a lead screw um, to to an extent. So with that, I'm going to show you how to do this this lead screw. Um, and what I have here is this is going to be parametric, um, but it's only going to have a couple of parameters. So what we only really need is the thread pitch, um, the major diameter. And I think I use the minor diameter, and that's it. And here are some of the names for it: the major diameters to the crest or the apex of the thread. In a trapezoidal one, that's considered the the that's the flat part, and the valley root is the val is the root of the thread. Um, so in my case, I'm going to be doing radius, and uh, I have diameters represented here, and these are aliased to to be referenced in the drawing. Um, I suggest you use uh, directly use radii so there's no calculation in the drawing but anyway so let me sh first show you quickly how uh, some other people have uh, I've seen other people uh, do the threaded rod and that's by defining the whole shape like this um, and basically they you know this is a profile of the threaded rod and um, yeah, I don't know if it's just me but I find this a bit clunky uh, you have to there's you have to take more measurements like for example you have to measure the crest and you have to measure you have to either know you know you have to add both of these angles to get it to get it fully constrained and it doesn't it doesn't promote an understanding of the thread I think um, again that could just be me so I, I chose to do it and also because I wanted to demo um, demo construction geometries, I, I did it di slightly differently. So let me show you what we got going on here. I want to reverse these. I can't, I can never get it to do this uh, the way I want. All right. So in my drawing here, I start out with a sketch and I'm going to do a whole new drawing so you can see. Um, and I, I can create construction geometries and then the actual geometries on top of that. So let's start out with a new a new sketch to uh, to 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 do this, and then um, so we're gonna do a whole new document, and uh, 
I'll just be using thread pitch and the major major diameter for the for the spreadsheet. Okay, so let's start out with in our new document. I'm just, let's actually just close those all together. So I'll save that, and let's start out by just creating um, in our part design. We'll do our, our typical body and sketch. We're gonna we're gonna put that. In this case, we're gonna do it on the YZ plane because later it's gonna be it's gonna be swept around a helix, which is gonna be oriented in the Z on the Z axis. So I'm just gonna leave that sketch for now, and then I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna do a um, a spreadsheet. And um, let's just add our spreadsheet, and let's put in pitch and major diameter. And I'm just gonna do an arbit arbitrary pitch of three or of two and our major diameter is gonna be three. Um, and let's alias these. So if if you're in this, you can either get to the alias by right clicking and getting properties and then use alias. Or if you're in the spreadsheet workbench, you can just click this tag right here and that goes straight to alias. So we're just let's just call that pitch. Let's go straight to alias here, and let's call that MDIAM, uh, the non-industry standard names there. <laughs> okay, so now that we have a spreadsheet to, to draw from, let's go back to our, um, like I said, it always does these the opposite of what I want. Don't know why. Ah. I think it's whichever one's in front, maybe. At any rate, that's the way I want it. Okay, so now we're going to go back in our spreadsheet, and um, if you saw in the previous one, uh, I used construction geometries to create the angle of um, of the threads, and it also allows you to, to set it. It sets the depth um, by by it like um, inherits the depth. Let's say. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to have three triangles here, or, or three lines, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to, three lines, and that one should, should have been on the uh, axis. So let's get that one constrained on the axis. So all the constraints work the same as, um, as if they were regular line, if, if there was regular lines, but what, what these won't be shown, th these won't be shown in the sketch later on. So, um, so to start with, our pitch is, is can be defined by the, these points here. So I'm just going to set this to pitch, and instead of entering it right there, I'm going to change. I'm going to set it to spreadsheet and pitch. Okay. So that's <laughs> all right. So, and then I'm going to also set this pitch as well. And that's also going to be set to spread this, the pitch. And you'll, that'll become obvious as we draw the, uh, draw the whole thing later. Okay, so that's it for our construction lines. That's all I need. So now we're going to turn construction lines off. Okay, so now we're just going to draw the, the, the shape of the, uh, of the, um, thread. So we're going to have the walls and then we have the, the crest, the other side. And I'm just doing this off of here to show you, um, the other wall and the root or the valley. Now, one thing I've noticed is if you do these in the opposite order, the blue line can obscure the white line. So if you do the blue lines, the construction lines first, it doesn't get obscured. And then what I did was I brought them over to the blue line. Um, even drawing them directly on it, got the white lines. Oh, see, I'm, nope, I'm going to prove myself a liar. Oh, no, okay. So the order you draw these lines dictates which one is shown on top of the other. They're really, you know, embedded within each other. Uh, but the program will show you the one that you drew last, I believe. So now, now I'm just going to constrain these to the angles. Let's, let's, um, 
join those. Try it again. Okay, so that's that's what was happening to me before. Is I was getting a not the best representation of. You know, you want to be able to see your geometries, not over top the construction geometries. But that's what ha that's what it happens. So they're there, even though you can't always see them. I'd prefer it if you could say which one got priority. Okay, so um, so now all we have to do is add our major diameter, and that's to there. That's from crest to the, the center line. So we're gonna do a spreadsheet. Oops, sorry, gotta go into function first. And spreadsheet, um, what was it? And I am okay. And then now, so you see how everything kind of resizes together. So the next one is this is going to be the minor diameter, which in my case, in in the case of this trapezoidal, is one half the major. So that's why I didn't put in a parameter for it. I'm just going to use math, even though math with embedded math is not a good idea for design purposes because um, somebody's got to find that so I have minor diameter and I'm going to divide that by two so the problem with that is now I mean it'll get changed if you change the major diameter but if you don't know that calculations in there you have to go hunting for it so you can see we're almost we're almost fully constrained um, this is the only uh, piece that's left. Let's see. So the only, I have two more constraints I want to add is the thread pitch here. And that's going to be uh, spreadsheet thread pitch or th spreadsheet pitch. Okay. There's that.
So that's good. So now the only thing we want to do is I want to change the height. Um, and that's that's the height from of the whole helix. And as you're changing it, you might think, oh, it's just lengthening the the um, the length of the line. It's not. It's just allowing the spiral to go to the full height. So you know that's right there is two millimeters. That's two point one or two point four to there. So when you get the three mil three millimeters, three millimeters. Sorry, it'll be halfway around. And when you get to four, it'll come all the way around because that's a multiple of two. So two millimeters, two millimeters. So it has nothing to do with the length. It, it's the length of the spiral is imputed based on the height, but you're just, it's the total height of the helix. So for fun, I'm just gonna do, I wanna do six. Okay, and we're gonna leave angle as it is. And so now we're just gonna sweep that. So I'm gonna pick the sketch and I'm gonna pick sweep and we're gonna pick um, uh, sweep so it should I wish it did automatically put it in there because I went in selected so like in the draft workbench if you select something it skips the first step for you because you've already selected it so you got to pick the sweep path and you've got to pick each of the elements of the sweep path you can't just pick the one and it won't, it won't do the whole thing um, and then when you're finished selecting the elements you click done and okay and it's going to sweep. Now this looks really messy. And that's because there's two ways that the uh, FreeCAD decides to orient your sketch. So here's your sketch here. And you can kind of see that it's uh, rotating it with the, the, the orientation of the sketch is rotating with the spiral. We don't want that. We want, um, we want this, the, the sketch to, to stay... Uh, you know, keep its orientation and just basically rotate around the z-axis. So it's basically not going to have a uh, a y or a or y or an x rotation. It's going to have a it's going to rotate around the z and move up the seed. So to get that, you just want to set Frenet to true, and that's just Frenet is a uh, thing that talks about vectors and which way they're pointing when you're when you're moving around the curve. So that keeps the keeps the uh, sketch oriented correctly okay so that's that's how to do a, a basic um, threaded uh, not a threaded rod I, <laughs> I always get this wrong uh, to do a lead screw is a trapezoidal lead screw um, Acme style and you know you'd need to finish this up by capping these ends I'm not going to get into that this was really just about um, construction lines which are shown here and how you can use them to get a drawing and then and the resulting object in this is the sketch here yeah. and so that's it for today I hope this was helpful sorry if I'm a little disjointed today I don't know why I but I'm distracted or something have a great day if you like these videos uh, please subscribe uh, when I get a new subscriber it just makes my heart jump love it and uh, like it and share it so I can I'd like to keep doing these and uh, do specific parts if you have anything that you want me to work on I'd love to do that and uh, just let me know in the comments have a great day thanks